Hey guys, this is Trini and in today's tutorial, let's uh, tune some hyperparameters to find the best parameters for our neural network or for our problem that we are trying to solve. And in the last couple of tutorials, I hope you watched them. We did talk about using grid search CV, which is exactly what we're going to use for hyperparameter tuning. And in the last video, I did warn you about parallelization. Again, we'll I'll, I'll quickly mention about it when we get to that stage uh, in this in this video. So let's just get into the code and get started. So uh, here is the code and the problem we are going to work on is basically MNIST image classification. It doesn't matter. Uh, it can be anything that you're trying to do. Okay, any classification or regression type of problem that you're trying to solve. This method definitely applies to it. And I'm doing MNIST because I don't have to share the data with you and everyone, uh, you'll have access to it. Okay, so let me quickly walk through the code. You may already know how to do these tasks because we are going to quickly put together a fully dense layer uh, model and then uh, have some parameters defined and then see, uh, especially in this video, let's actually see the uh, what is the best learning rate and momentum, okay? Because this is often uh, the question I get stuck at. What is the right learning rate for the type of images I'm trying to classify or segment if you're doing UNet or any other type of uh, uh, architecture for semantic segmentation. Okay, let's go ahead and start by importing the relevant libraries. And this is again, needs no introduction. We are just importing dense, sequential, and dropout. And then uh, these two also do not need any introduction. This is NumPy and matplotlib for plotting here. And this one requires some introduction if you haven't watched my video on this section. So uh, within scikit-learn model selection, we are going to import grid search CV. And this is the uh, this is the method we are going to use to search for all the parameters and then go ahead and uh, fit the model with each of those parameters and a combination of those. And then it uses cross-validation to tell us exactly what is the best, uh, uh, best parameters, okay? And uh, this is scikit-learn, meaning it doesn't understand anything about uh, our uh, Keras, but there is a trick. There is a wrapper around it, so which I'll talk about in a second. So. Uh, just to let you know what uh, Keras and, uh, uh, I don't think I need this TF right there. So what Keras and TensorFlow version we are working on. Oh, God, I'm not good at selecting these. Okay, let's go ahead and do run those two lines. So TensorFlow 2.2 and Keras 2.4.3. Now, it's very important to fix the random seed. That's because now you're actually trying to uh, use different parameters, uh, obviously scan the parameter space. So each time if the random seed changes, then you're not comparing apples to apples. Even now there is some randomness by fixing this random seed to any number. I like 42 because that's the answer, ultimate answer to the life's question. If you don't know what that is, I feel sad for you. If you know what that means, then you watch the right movies or you read the right books. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and import our MNIST uh, data. And again, you import that. It's available as part of keras.datasets, okay, dot MNIST. So I'm just importing those and I'm loading that and separate, uh, unwrapping it into training and testing datasets. And if you see up here, the training dataset has 60,000 images. Each image is 28 by 28 pixels, and the testing dataset has 10,000 images. That's a lot. If you use all of those 60,000 images as part of your training every time while you're trying to fit the model, then that is going to take a lot of time. So it's customary to take a fraction, tiny fraction of those, but still representative fraction, okay? Tiny fraction, and then go ahead and do your, uh, do your fitting. Okay, so in case you don't know what this is, I hope you do what these numbers mean. The problem here is these are the images, handwritten digits. We have 60,000 of those in the training data set, okay? And the goal is to identify what these are. So that's the problem. And I, I'm pretty sure you know that. So let's go back and uh, all these uh, images are 8-bit images, meaning the values go from 0 to 255 at every pixel. Let's go ahead and divide each pixel by 255 so the values go between 0 to 1. Okay, this is a way of scaling the values uh, for our neural network. I'm not going to use convolutional layers like I already mentioned because we are not trying to uh, uh, fit the best model right now. We are trying to span... Uh, 
scan the parameter space for the best model. And I want to be able to demonstrate this to you within a few minutes. So I'm not going to work on 2D convolutional, which is why I'm reshaping this 60,000 by 28 by 28 into 60,000 by 784. Why 784? 28 by 28 is 784. And I'm doing exactly the same thing to test data set. Okay, so now I have my training data set as a vector for each image, meaning for each image I have a vector of 784, which means I'm ready to go into the dense layers. Otherwise, I need to flatten this. Okay, I could have actually added a flatten layer, but this is uh, easier. Okay, since this is a classification, let's convert our y values because right now our y values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's convert them into categorical. Again, please watch my video on one hot encoding. This is exactly what we are trying to do here. Okay, so all our y values are one hot encoded, so we are all set. Like I said, we don't want to work with 60,000 images, so let's go ahead and further split our train into a smaller set. So the way I'm doing is using the train test split from scikit-learn, and if I expand this, all I'm trying to do here is assign 90% of this 60,000 to some junk. I mean, I called it do not use right here, but assign 90% to that and take only 10%, meaning only 6,000 images as uh, X values that we are going to send through the grid. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And now you should see that my X values for the grid are 6,000 by 784. Uh, still a lot, but I think we need a good representation to get a best uh, uh, fit. Okay, now we are ready for our model. And let's define our input dimension because as part of the model, you have to define the input dimensions, which is nothing but 784, right? So our input dimension is 784. And I do not have any, uh, any uh, uh, convolutional layers. So my input is directly going into dense layer right there. And it's a vector already, okay? So what am I doing? Now, the reason I defined my model as a function Normally, I would just do model equals to sequential and model.add, 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 and then uh, model.compile and model.print, right? Or dot summary dot print. Now I define my model as a function because this is the function I'm going to provide later on to as an input uh, for my model. We'll get there in a second. So, uh, and we are going to use stochastic gradient descent as our optimizer, okay? So our optimizer is optimizer and our optimizer is defined as stochastic uh, gradient descent right here, okay? And what does stochastic gradient descent take as inputs? Learning rate and momentum. This is where the question is. What is the right learning rate? What is the right momentum? I don't know, but... I would like to provide an input of 0 0.01 as the initial learning rate and momentum as 0 0.1. You have to provide these as inputs to the function, to your model, okay? Otherwise, later on, it gives you, it throws you an error saying all parameters not defined or something. It's a very vague, it's not that clear. It's a very vague error, okay? No matter what parameters you're trying to tune, other than batch size and epochs, which is outside of the model, anything that's inside the model, you have to provide it. In this example, we are just looking at learning rate and momentum. So let's just provide those uh, here, but then we're going to change them later. I hope that's not confusing uh, for you guys. So, so far we did up to this. So let's go ahead and run all of this code. All we did is define a model. Let me summarize it, that's it. Now. Let's import the Keras classifier from Keras wrapper scikit-learn. Why? Because uh, this whole thing is defined uh, or designed to work with scikit-learn models. For it to understand our Keras models, we are going to import this Keras classifier. There is also something called Keras regressor. So if it's a regression problem, go ahead and import that. For now, let's go ahead and import Keras classifier, which we use to build this model. Okay, so we have the model right there, but we are going to use this to build this model, okay? This is why I defined this as a function. I defined this part as a function because we're going to import it and convert that into something that the later part, the scikit-learn understands. That's the key here, okay? So let's import that. And now let's define our batch size as 100, epochs as 10. And now here is where you define the model. How do you define the model? Use the Keras classifier wrapper right? This is the, oh, sorry, right there. 
from Keras dot uh, wrapper scikit learn Keras classifier and build the function. What is that function? Define model. This is where this is why this needs to be a function. Okay, so we define that. Everything else is ex you should know it. A number of epochs, batch size, and everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these lines. Now let's define what parameters we want to. Oftentimes I get I don't know what the right learning rate is. This is 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, 0 0.0001. What is this? Where do I stand right here? In fact, I believe you can also, instead of using grid search, you can also do random search, random grid search. So you give some uh, range and then provide like, okay, within this range, just select some random values. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not gonna make any videos. Go ahead. The process is going to be exactly the same. Go ahead and look for documentation. But for now, let's say my learning rate uh, list is these four momentum list is these okay now from this list I'm gonna create a dictionary because what goes into uh, grid search is a dictionary okay so that's exactly what we are trying to do here my parameter grid the grid of values that it's going to span is a dictionary of my learning rate and momentum that's it with these two I'm creating a dictionary there are many ways to create dictionary and this is an easy way to do that so when I do this it should create a parameter grid uh, if I can find it right there a dictionary of parameter grid as you can see it's got two lists that's pretty much it now we are ready to uh, define our grid so far hopefully so good now we are defining a grid our grid is I mean, you can call this anything. You can call this classifier, CLF, or model, or anything. But grid makes intuitive sense. A grid is grid search CV, okay? And our estimator is the model right here, okay? And my parameter grid is the space that it, we want it to span. This is the dictionary, which is the one that we just defined. End jobs, watch my previous video on this. I'm defining that uh, uh, it should be using 16 of my CPUs. So in my case, uh, let's see, I have 32. I'm assigning 50% uh, uh, for, for this task. We'll keep an eye on this in a minute. If you put n jobs equals to minus one, it's going to use all the CPUs and on my system, it's hanging on two of my systems. It's actually hanging everything, so I don't want to use that. And cross-validation, this is three-fold cross-validation. You can put five-fold cross-validation because this is the score that we are looking at to say if the model is good or bad. So let's go ahead and define this. And now we just need to fit it. This is like model, so fit on what? Our x and y values x grid and y grid right we just want 6,000 samples so let's go ahead and uh, start this and while it's running let me open this here and you should see that my utilization right there jumped up to about 68 60 percent right there while it's doing this grid search because it's using 50 percent of my resources and the remaining probably are coming from my uh, uh, recording this video and other things that it's trying to do. There you go. It's done doing the grid search and now my utilization should come back to 10 to 15 percent the previous state. So here is where it actually spiked. This is how you parallelize it. Okay now I put my uh, where is it? Verbos. I think uh, you can actually do that but anyway you see how you see yeah yeah right here I was trying to find this Verbos equals to one um, but you only see that it's printing things on the screen after the last uh, point is done that's because of parallelization if I don't parallelize if I uh, only do n jobs equals to one or don't define any n jobs you'll see this on screen printing going on every time it's doing this training because we parallelized it's not in case you wonder why you are not seeing anything here okay so it did its task it stores everything in uh, in in this grid result right right there it stores everything in here and from there we can extract uh, things like best score CV results, cross-validation results, which we'll look at that in a second, okay? First, let's go ahead and print best score and best parameters, right? Best parameters is, okay, after all of that, these are the parameters I'm recommending you. So let's go ahead and print those. And the best score we got was 92.8%, okay? Using a learning rate of 0.1 and momentum of 0.9, okay? So it's recommending that, okay, use this and use that. This is how you perform a grid search. Now, if you want to look at the mean uh, values for the uh, for these and uh, uh, standard deviations and uh, the parameters, here is a little snippet of code that can go through each of these and then 
prints it out on the screen so let's expand so we can have a quick look here okay uh, so there you go mean value of 11 point something and 92.8 is where we got a uh, learning rate of 0.1 and momentum of 0.9 as you can see this is not good not good not good so it's doing all of these iterations and finally it tells me okay this is the best one so this is how you perform your hyperparameter search for these and in the next tutorial i'm going to show you for epochs batch size and everything else let's do a bunch of these at once and then uh, that way you'll learn one other thing and in the one after that let's learn something else but if you want to be notified about all of these cool stuff you have to subscribe to this channel okay so please go ahead and do that and let's meet in the next tutorial